It seems a little disrespectful to praise the Predator 16 for its impressive display. Why? Well, because it includes a very powerful hardware from Intel and Nvidia. This laptop must be a war machine, given its core i9-3900HX processor and Nvidia RTX 4080 graphic card. Not only that, but the GPU has a 165W TGP, which is completely insane. Consider the fact that high TGP graphic card required a thick and book in the past. And this is really not the case with Predator 16. But before I tell you more about that, let's have a look at this spec seat. It comes with core i9 3900HX processor with 24 cores, out of which 8 are performance ones and the other 16 are efficiency cores and 32 threads as usual. An NVIDIA RTX 4080 with 12GB VRAM and 165W of max TGP. A 16-inch 2560x1600 PIPS panel with a 240Hz of refresh rate and a maximum brightness of 600 nits, a 16 gigs dual channel DDR5 RAM with a frequency of 5600 MHz, and 2 TB of M.2 NVMe Zen 4 SSDs. Now for the connectivity, it has Bluetooth 5.2 and Wi-Fi 6E. It's weird that such a powerful gaming device has such a low-key design. It has matte flat body panels made out of aluminium. However, the design is very simple, with no strips, shapes or anything else to distract you from gaming. Even so, the Predator logo is really minimal. Nonetheless, it glows in a manner of a gaming laptop. The laptop's structural integrity is worthy of a praise. I found very little flex in the lid and almost no flex in the base. Back of the base extends for about 2-3 cm behind the hinges, directing the majority of heat away from your fingers. The otherwise large footprint of the laptop is complemented by a weight of 2.6 kg, which is quite good for a gaming laptop. Its profile measures between 24.9 but 26.9 mm. Furthermore, the overall size of the laptop is comparable to that of its 15.6 inch cousin. The lid can be opened with single hand with one swift movement. The bezels are extremely thin all around the display and naturally the top one hides the web camera. Now for the exciting part. The base has a vent above the keyboard which is briefly interrupted by the turbo button. When it comes to the keyboard itself, it has interesting design. Although the keystrokes are long, the feedback is a little soft. The clicks on the other hand is similar to that of a mechanical keyboard, resulting in a strangely satisfying typing experience. By the way, it comes with a perky RGB keyboard which is better than the 4-zone RGB option. The huge touchpad can be found further down. It has extremely smooth glass surface as well as tracking when combined with the fast-paced displays. Turn the laptop upside down and you will find speaker cutouts as well as ventilation grill. It should be noted that the fan also draw cool air through the vent above the keyboard. The hot air on the other hand is exhausted through four vents, two on the back and one on each side of the device. Now if you look at the ports on the left hand side, there is a LAN port, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port, SD card reader and an audio jack. Lastly, the back side of the laptop is home to power plug, an HDMI 2.1 connector and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. The Acer Predator 16-inch IPS panel has 2560x1600p resolution, 16x10 aspect ratio, comfortable viewing angles and good contrast ratio. It covers 100% of sRGB color gamut and 99% of DCI-P3 color space. Color accuracy is within professional standards in both cases. That being said, I have saved the best for last. It has 240Hz of refresh rate and a super fast 10 milliseconds pixel response time with rise and fall durations of 5.3 and 4.9 milliseconds. The speakers on the other hand produces a sound of very good quality and high maximum volumes. Its low, mid and high tones are clear of deviations. On the inside, there is a 90 watt hour battery which may sound like a large enough size, but in reality, it was able to pull a maximum battery backup of 4 hours of just watching YouTube with brightness set to 50%. So considering the power hungry CPU and GPU, I believe 4 hours is very good for this laptop. The fan noise is extremely loud and significantly over average as compared to the other gaming laptops. Now looking at the upgrading options, here you can put up to 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM working at 5600 MHz. In addition, there are two M.2 PCI X4 slots both of these support Zen 4 SSDs. The cooling comprises a total of 5 heat pipes connecting to the 4 heat sinks. The two metal fans blow the heat away from the device, while a couple of heat spreaders deal with the VRMs and the graphic memory. And there is also a liquid metal thermal compound on the CPU and the GPU. In fact, because this is not a retail unit, the temperature you are seeing here are higher than the older model. And that is only due to some driver issue, because the cooling system has been improved, so the temperature you will see in the retail unit will be lower than what you are seeing here. Now we will start CPU benchmarks with everyone's favorite, the Cinebench R53 multi-core using base power. And the Core i9-3900HX is very impressive at 55W power limit. The addition of 8 more E-cores relative to 12900HX does boost the multi-core performance substantially at same power levels, giving us a 46% higher scores in this workload. This has generally been the case with the many CPU generations now. More cores clogged lower is more efficient than fewer cores clogged higher. In R23 single-core test, 
the gains are naturally a lot lower. As the general peak core architecture is quite similar between Elder Lake and the Raptor Lake. The main difference here is the higher single core clock speed, jumping from 5 to 5.5 GHz plus more L2 CAS. This continue to gives Intel a very strong lead in single core performance as compared to the AMD 6000 series. Although AMD is about to launch the 7000 laptop CPUs shortly. Here the 3900HX in Blender 3.3 classroom again ended up 45% faster than the 12900HX which is a great result thanks to additional 8E cores. MATLAB is a short burst workload that is very memory and single threaded sensitive while the 3900HX is the fastest CPU that I have tested so far in this benchmark. It's not hugely faster than its predecessor, just a 5% gain. With that said, Intel's high IPC does lead to a domination of other processors. Basically, all the top processors in MATLAB are Intel. Thanks to its higher clock speed and better multi-threaded performance, the Core i9-3900HX is roughly 34% faster than 12900HX in 3 d Mark Time Spy CPU benchmark. You will notice substantial improvement in the apps that uses DirectX 12 API. The 900HX was quite impressive in FL Studio, importing a track 33% faster than the Core i9-12900HX, which was surprisingly weak in this workload using base power. The important aspect of this improvement is that Intel is finally able to outperform AMD with its Raptor Lake processors. The combination of the Core i9-3900HX and NVIDIA RTX 4080 wasn't as advantageous in Premiere Pro as expected. Looking at the overall score, the new flagship contender was just 6% faster than our previous leader, though this was affected by a slightly lower live playback performance. Adobe Photoshop is a very single-threaded benchmark. I actually didn't see any performance difference between the 3900HX and 12900HX, which was a bit of a surprise. I triple checked this number and indeed the 13th gen part was a bit slower than the older 12900HX. This could be related to very weak iGPU performance. After Effect benefits from the increased single threaded performance and ends up 9% faster than the 12900HX, which is in line with other single threaded tests that we have seen. Now comes the second most exciting section of this video, the gaming benchmarks. I have compared the 165W RTX 4080 with the 3080 from the previous year to help you understand how much the 4000 series performance has been improved and whether an upgrade is actually worthwhile. Now that every game is being tested with 1440p ultra resolution with DLSS enabled, the performance has improved substantially. But the cost per frame as compared to the RTX 3080 is a bit disappointing. The DLSS 3 tensor optical flow has been present since the RTX 20 series GPUs, but Nvidia has kept it hidden from the users so they can't even try it out, despite what Nvidia claims. So the higher cost per frame is simply a byproduct of GPUs market inflation. Hence considering the performance jump from the RTX 3080 to 4080. I believe it is not an appropriate time to upgrade to 4000 series. But if you are dead set on an upgrade and money is not an issue, so if you are willing to bid on the Predator Helio 16, which is a great gaming machine by the way, even only on the performance figures, plus I expect the retail version to be fantastic on cooling. Due to the use of liquid metal thermal compound and the crazy volume of air it two fans can move, now when this laptop will be available, I will put the best bang link in the description box down below, so you can check them out. So that's it for the video, thanks for watching, if you are new to the channel and like my content then do subscribe. I will see you in the next video, till then, bye bye.